How's it going guys? Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. Today we're going to focus on setting up your scene. So as you can see here from where we last off, left off last time, there we go, uh, we have a pretty boring scene. We have our Iron Golem here and a camera and a generic background. So the first thing you're going to want is like, okay, well where does this guy need to be? Right? You don't want to just do this and you could theoretically build a scene. So you can come up here and you can choose block pick your block and then once you have a block in the scene what you can do is move it by accident okay sorry about that okay so you can come over here to your project properties and then you have grass block by default that's what you're going to get when you spawn in a block but you have this here and you can click on that and just like the characters from the first tutorial you can take this and you can change it into whatever block you want so let's say you have this you want a stone block so you hit okay and then you want to repeat it right so like if you wanted to create a stone wall you wouldn't want to have to spawn in 10 of these and put them all together so you can come here to repeat and then when you drag these out your y parameter or your x parameter or your z parameter and then you can create a wall now for a simple scene that may well be simple enough and that's all you need but for a more complicated scene let's go ahead and delete this out of our library be mindful that if you delete it out of Say I have my uh, camera selected here. If you delete it here, it's not going to delete it out of your library. It's just going to take it off of your timeline. That Cameras don't go in the library, but um, it's just an example. Just bear with me. So if you want to get your uh, scene implemented, like say you've uh, built an amazing world in uh, Minecraft the game and you want to bring that in. So you come up here to your crafting table, as we have, and you go to scenery. You click on that, and then you get nothing. There's nothing that happens. You do notice this down here in your timeline. Let's go ahead and put a keyframe on it by double clicking and you have this here and there's nothing to it. It's just like an empty uh, item in the world. So you go to your project properties and then you come down here and it says scenery none. And none is not what you want. You want there to be more. So you click on that and it drops down and you get import from world or browse now browse is if you have a schematic save like you can use mc edit or possibly like world edit or something and save a schematic out of a world and then have it ready to go and you can browse and then go to that schematic and bring it into the world but for now we're just going to focus on if you're getting started and you have a world and you just want to do a test so go to import from world sorry about that guys the window actually came up behind the minimator window and made it appear as though the program had frozen but anyway we're back on track now so you go to this and then it starts out and it just seems like nothing's really doing anything but you go to this right here and it says world you click on that and then you can pick on any world you want i mean click on any world you want <laughs> jesus christ i cannot get my words right today sorry about that film world this is one that i have that i generally like build things that i want to bring into uh my uh, animation worlds and as you can see just by clicking and dragging here I'm making this and this is your top-down view this is your side view and whatever is in this square is what you're gonna get and if you right click you can drag around and get uh, to different areas in the world and as you can see there's like a little Minecraft Steve face there that's wherever you logged out last time in the world and it's going to show you that. So what we want to do is actually scroll to zoom out. And I have the scene set up here that uh, I used in my first animation. And I'm just going to draw this square around it right about there. And as you can see over here on the side view, it's kind of low. We don't really want it <laughs> to be below the surface of the world because that's where we need to work. So I'm going to drag it like that. And from what I can tell... This is a little house that I built. This is a farm. And everything that I want or should need in the scene is there. Now, if you don't get what you want, like you go ahead and click done. And it'll import. And if you realize that you missed something, you didn't get something that you wanted, you can always just go back to this, import from world again, and try to correct any mistakes that you may have made. And you should be good to go. So this is the world that we have. And what we can do is click on it in this, or you can click on it down here. We missed our keyframe because of the thing that happened earlier. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We can do it now. Okay, so you may notice with the ground on, if you try to move this down to like where your character is, you're going to have a little bit of a problem there. So what we're going to do is go ahead and just reset all the properties here to get this in the base center of our scene. And we're going to take our iron golem 
We're going to lift him up, put him right about there, and get him lined up. Now, one of the cool things is to note, and this will save you a little bit of trouble to remember this, is your Z position here. If you have your scenery set to zero or to any whole number, then anything you need to place and line up with the the ground of that scene, it's not going to be zero. If we go to zero, it's going to go back to the ground of our world here, the uh, the actual Minimator ground plane, okay? But what we can do is get this guy pretty close. If you notice, like right there where he starts clipping through, so we're at 143.75, and he's a little low. So if we go to 144, that should make him perfectly in line because, you know, each block only accounts for one Z position or however you want to put that. So that makes it a little easier to get things lined up to keep those numbers clean and functional for us. So another thing you may notice is if you're going to create an animation especially, but it can also, I think, come into play if you're making just a screenshot or a wallpaper background is you may notice that certain items are affected by wind. So if you go to our background tab here, well, we have to actually click on it to drag it down. Sorry about that. Um, at the very bottom, you have wind and you can turn this off and notice how that is completely stationary now. If you turn it back on and then you have wind strength. If you turn that on, you see how it's greatly affected at this point, and then wind amount. And if you turn the wind amount up, then things start going really crazy. Now we want to reset these, so uh, another thing to uh, notice is right here on this pop-up here, it says right-click to reset. So if you right-click any parameter in the uh, menus here, it'll reset it to its default position. And that's very useful, very helpful when you make changes and you... Uh, want to go back and you don't know where back was okay now that we got that we got our scene we have our character and maybe we want him holding something so let's go over here and we'll bring in an item and by default hey whoops there we go let's get him back okay <laughs> sorry about that by default our item spawns there it's a sword and i think that uh is the spawning relative to the camera as well keep that in mind that's why it spawned down on the ground like that. Anywho, it's not a big problem. Just go ahead and move it. So we could have an iron golem holding a sword, or we can come over here to our project tab, and I keep trying to scroll and that happens. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so again, you have you can change your item. You can go to here. I can do this. It turns it into the item of a helmet, not the actual armor. This is an item sheet. So keep that in mind. We can have him holding a glistering melon. We can have him holding some horse armor or so a disc. I think this uh, Iron Golem looks like he's into fat beats. So we're going to go ahead and have him holding on to this uh, item here, this disc. For a still image, that's going to be completely fine. But if you want to animate this and you want to have him be able to swing his arm and not have to animate the actual disc to follow his arm, what we're going to do is notice that I've already positioned it. Now, this is what you wanted. You could take a screenshot and it'd be perfectly fine. But now that we've already positioned it, we're going to go over here to item properties. And this is with the item selected. Now, one thing we can do is rename it. I'm going to call it disc. And then that changes it there. So that way we can keep up with what's what in our scene. So we're going to go to disc properties. Notice how that changed now. And we have hierarchy and we can parent. So we're going to parent this to our iron golem. If we parent it like that, then we also want to reset the position because once you parent it, if you have it positioned by the iron golem, then it goes to the position of the iron golem. And so your movements here have offset it. So go ahead and right click on all that and reset it. And then that brings it back into our scene. So you want to go ahead and take this and let's go ahead and position it where we want it. You have to eyeball it a little bit. Jiggle it, wiggle it, whatever you got to do, get it to where you want it to be. And then now it's set. But the thing is, let's go ahead and move his arm. Nothing's happening. It didn't do anything. And why is that? Well, that's because we parented it to the Iron Golem himself. We need to parent it to his arm. So if you come down here, you notice this drop down. And we can parent it to his legs. We can parent it to his body. We can parent it to his head or his nose. We can parent it to his arms. 
And obviously we want it on his left arm, so we're going to click that. And notice that when I moved it, when it was parented to him, it's also moved it again. So like each point that you can parent it to has its own position. So you need to make sure that this is uh, where you want it to be. So notice here that you also have lower half. And if you select that, that also changes whether it's going to be selected to the upper half of his arm or the lower half. We do want lower half because he's going to be holding it. Also notice that the uh, rotation that we have that I changed earlier has also been, uh, been affected. So go ahead and do that. And that has changed the rotation. And he's holding the disc perhaps a little more naturally, but that's not what we want. Now that we have everything set the way that we want to, then what we want to do is go ahead and position the item exactly how we want it to be and like this. All right, so notice here there's another issue that we run into, and that is the rotation point of this disc is way down here. Is this, there's like a default position for items, and that is where this is. And up here, now you don't have this on every single object. We'll get into that at a later point. But for now, you have custom rotation point. For this one, we can do this. So let's make sure everything is default. We haven't messed with it, so it is. And we want to take our Z. Generally, 8, the number 8 seems to be about center. So what we do is we'll put that. So we get our X and our Z centered. And Y is a little bit off. We can play with that a little bit if we want to. But in general, this uh, the default setting seems to be about what we wanted. So you may notice this isn't exactly dead center of the object. We have a little bit of offness there. And if that's a problem, we can change it. All you got to do is just finesse this a little bit. And we'll get it about where we want it. So now if we spin it, it's, it's a little off center. But it's pretty much what we want. Because uh, we're not going to be tossing it or anything. So... Now that we've got that set up, we can go ahead and have him holding his disc. And there he is. And that's it. Got our guy, got our scene, he's holding his item. I think he's good to go. He's ready for his close-up. All right, so now that we've got our scene set up, what we want to do is go ahead and bring our camera back to the position that we want it. And here we go. Let's bring it up. Go ahead and take it over. Let's bring up our camera view so we can see what's going on. And then we can actually just hold the right click in here and move it. Q goes down, E goes up. So that's your up and down movements. You can do it with the key, with the keyboard so you don't have to uh, mess with that too much. Let's just position it. Something like this. Pretty good for uh, what we're trying to do. Now, you got your scene set up. Everything's ready to go. And... You want to get some natural lighting. Now, you may, you may want to do some advanced lighting. We'll talk about that in a later tutorial. But for now, you just want to make sure that all of your settings are about where you want them to be. So what we do is we're going to bring this up so we can see what's going on, see what our camera sees. And we're just going to go ahead and turn on the rendering so we can see the actual lighting in the scene. And with this tab, we can or this tool, we can uh, change the time of day. Now, we went over that in the first tutorial, so I hope you remember that one. And what we're going to do is we want to have, let's say I want to have, like, the sun in the background here. I want him to kind of be a silhouette, so to speak. So what we're going to do is, like, bring the sun down. As you can see here in our background, the sun is low. And then we can rotate it. We'll make it right about... There, so there's our awesome dish jockey iron golem, and he is all set to be a star. <laughs> we'll just go with that. And then also, what we can do is we can change clouds, we can have them on and off, we can make the cloud speed faster so they're moving faster, and we can also lower the clouds. You know, we've got maybe some fog moving through if you want to do that. You can also change the cloud texture to make that a little more of a feasible idea. We can also raise them up so they're silhouettes in the sky. For now, we'll just leave it default. We can also make the clouds bigger or smaller, which looks kind of weird. That might actually work for that fog effect. Oh, we're finding out things. And you have your cloud height, and you can make that. Let's go ahead and turn off rendering for a second. You can make that big. And so if you notice here, our clouds are a lot thicker. So the rest of these parameters are pretty much uh, self-explanatory. You can change the color of the sky. We can do this. And like depending on the time of day, you know, we don't have different effects. You click that to reset. We can change the color of the clouds. Maybe we want them to be apocalyptic and ominous. We can change the sunlight color. You can do that and 
do stuff depending on you know the mood that you're going for the scene the setup that you want um changing all these parameters can give you a lot of different results so keep that in mind another useful thing for setting up your scene is the fog distance uh setting here so you notice here when i drag it down it brings in the fog it makes it very dense and difficult to see through but you also have fog size where you can have the fog way out or way in and it'll change just how dense the fog is when it gets close to you so that can be very helpful from setting up like a moody scene where you want fog and whatnot and playing around with the differences between those two will give you a lot of different effects and you can add a lot more emotion to your scenes and make them beautiful and amazing so one final thing to note here is the sunlight range uh, a member of the minimator forums made me aware of this josh ninja i think what's his name like saying josh ninja but together josh ninja and he mentioned that setting the sunlight range lower is a higher shadow detail. So what we want to do here is bring it up, bring the sun up, and we'll get a little bit of a shadow there. And then if you change this, notice how, like we don't have the shadow detail up, but you may notice how his shadow changes. So that's another thing, you know, if you're trying to work with shadows in your scene, you may also want to... Uh, mess with that to make sure you're getting the type of shadows that you want. So I think that about covers it for setting up your scene. Next time we're going to come back and try to actually animate the scene and have some stuff moving around a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Hope it was helpful. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to come as in the today and come back for the next one. And I'll see you guys in the next video.